Welcome back to Photoshop Basics on PSD Touch Plus. I'm Martin Perhiniak and in this tutorial we are going to talk about masking. Now this is one of my favorite topics in Photoshop and I think this is one of the most useful techniques that you need to learn if you want to use Photoshop efficiently. So let's get started and I would like to start with this nice panoramic photograph and I would like to show you first why do we need masking. Now there are lots of ways to use a mask in Photoshop but mainly we can use it to hide or show particular parts of our layers. In this document I have only one layer so when I will hide parts of the image we will just simply see a completely empty transparent background. I make a selection with my rectangular marquee tool around the girl sitting on this rock, something like this. And then I go to my masks panel, which was a new panel in CS4, but I really like to use this panel. And here on the top we have this icon, add a pixel mask. Now if you choose that, you will hide everything around the selection and you will only see the parts from the layer which were inside your selection. The great thing is that you can always invert your mask with this icon here on the masks panel. If you click on that, you can invert the mask and show the environment and not the selection. And then you can invert it back again. So it's completely non-destructive. You can also change the density of the mask with this option here. And then you will see a semi-transparent version of the image in the background and if we create a new layer so I will create a new layer I will fill that with black I use the keyboard shortcut alt backspace and I put that layer behind the layer with the girl and you can see that now if I go back to my mask I select the mask because this is the mask next to the thumbnail of the image. This is called a layer mask. So I select the mask and then I go back to the density and you can see that I can easily change the density of the mask. You can also use a keyboard shortcut. I just put back the density to 100. You can also use a keyboard shortcut. It's shift clicking on the thumbnail of the layer mask. That will turn off the mask. And if you shift click again, turn it back on again. If you want to see the mask itself, you can alt or option click on the mask's thumbnail. And then you will see how a mask works. White shows black hides. That's the main thing about masking. If you understand this, you understand everything about masking. So again, white shows black hides. And just to show you what I mean, I go back to normal view by alt clicking on the mask again and I just zoom a little bit closer and I will use my brush tool, okay? And I will draw with black now. I draw with black and as you can see, black hides. But if I change to white with the X keyboard shortcut, I can show the image with white. So if you draw on the mask with white, you show, if you draw with black, I just switch back to black, you hide parts of the image again. So it's completely non-destructive. Masking is a great way to merge images together, but it can be also used for really creative effects. And I would like to show you something like that with this image. I will delete this layer mask now. I right click on it and I choose delete layer mask. Then I will make another selection again. I will make a selection something like this. Then instead of using this for a mask from the masks panel, I will go to the adjustment panel and I will choose black and white adjustment layer. You will see if you have a selection before you apply an adjustment layer, the adjustment layer will use your selection as a mask. So it will only apply the adjustment to the selection that you had. If you want to, of course you can invert this mask. So if I go now to the mask panel and I choose invert, then we will only see colors on the selection and black and white around the selection. 
You can even add style to the adjustment layer. If you double click on the layer, the black and white layer, and you choose stroke, you can add a stroke or frame around the image. And you can even add a drop shadow, for example. But in this case, because we are using a mask, we need to use inner shadow to have the shadow around the frame. And just like with drop shadow, the inner shadow, if you select it, you can also click on the image and move the shadow around. So I will just put it somewhere there and I will increase the size a bit just to blur it out a bit. Now I click on OK and I zoom out and you can see we have this nice frame here on the image and everything what we applied is completely non-destructive. So if I select my move tool, I can move this frame around the image quickly and easily, having the two effects applied to the adjustment layer and have that frame on the adjustment layer. And we can even use the free transform tool. So I select edit free transform if I want to resize this frame. Because the layer styles are set to a value, they won't change or won't stretch with the free transform tool. And of course, you can even use the free transform tool to rotate this frame. And you can see masking is a really powerful technique in Photoshop. I just want to show you quickly another example. So I close this one and I would like to put this nice forest picture in this window frame and hide these blocks of flats in the background. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm using my polygonal lasso tool to quickly select this frame. I will click here on the corner, the next one, third one, fourth one, and then I go back to my first to close this selection. And I go then to my masks panel and I choose the add a pixel mask option. Now it shows the selection, but I would like to only see the foreground. So I click on invert to invert it. And then I use my arrange documents button here on the top. And I select this one to up to see both uh, open documents. I use my move tool and I click on the forest image and then I click and drag it onto the other image. I can then close this document because I don't need it anymore because I have the forest here on top of the girl's layer. If I now move that behind the girl's layer like this, then we will see the forest in the window frame. It's that easy. If I now use the edit free transform, I can even make that a little bit smaller, something like this. And I can always play with it to position it into the best part, something like that. And we will come back to this example in the next tutorial when we are going to learn more about masking because there is not only layer masks in Photoshop, but we also have another great feature called clipping mask. In the next tutorial, we will learn what is the difference between these two techniques. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thanks a lot for your attention. See you next time.